1, 4, and 8. We have it say amen. 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 On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem. Don't leave. But wait for the gift my father promised. Which ye have which ye have heard me speak about. For God for John baptized with water. But in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Power. Power. So when the when so when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Mind your business. Okay. <laughs> he said to them, it is not for you to know the time or date the Father has set by his own authority, but you shall receive power. Mm. Power. Wonder working power. Mm. Power shift, break everything up, move everything out the way. Earthquakes. Mm. Jesus. Ooh. Due to this power, explosion, boom. Everything gotta go, everything gone. When the Holy Spirit comes up, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, up, on you, power, fire, a rock, boom, just like that. Mm. And you'll be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Sit down. If I were the subject for consideration, let the power of the Holy Spirit Continue to work, not you. See, we live in times where they needed this power because they had to continue the continuation of Jesus Christ to continue on souls to be saved, delivered and set free, to continue on miracles, signs and wonders, to continue on with spreading the gospel all over the world. That's why Jesus Christ, he had to leave. He couldn't stay in the physical body because the Holy Spirit had to go out through the whole world preaching the gospel, the good news, the fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. See, when we look at the church now today, the church now today, they, they, they look warm, they, they, they dead. And you know one thing I've learned too? You can have the Holy Spirit in you and still be dead. Yes. You gotta be very careful because you tell the Holy Spirit what to do. See, we have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit gotta have us. Yes. See, when the Holy Spirit has us, that's when the power come. That's when he can work. That's when he can do signs and miracles and wonders. You know, it's crazy when I look at it. We got this power of the Holy Spirit, this fire, this, to bring upon serpents, demons, scorpions, anything. We can speak with authority and power of the Holy Spirit and it, it's come to pass. It will be so. We got to know we got to have this faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't be no punks. And look, the body of Christ, you got to excuse me today because I feel a little, because... I'm, I, I'm tired. I'm tired of people. I'm tired of people dying. I'm tired of people just just giving up. I'm tired of people being lost. I'm tired of people all over the world. Our young brothers, our young sisters, they just dying. They just they don't have no hope. They just giving up. But we got this fire, the power of the Holy Spirit, and we sitting in the church just front and pretending, and we not at work. We gotta let the power of the Holy see. When we let the power of the Holy Spirit move, it gotta be a death. We don't want to die. We want to keep holding on. That, that, that's why the power of the Holy Spirit is sitting yes, in our bellies. He's not moving because we sit, the enemy, he loves it. And the enemy is lullabying the church today because we're sitting there holding the Holy Spirit in our belly. And people out here, they dying and they going to hell. People out here, they lost. Signs, no, no signs, no miracles. Summer's over, nobody's being saved. Nobody's being delivered. And we got the power. The Bible says, greater he that's inside of us than he is in the world. We got this power. We are more than conquerors. We are warriors. We are soldiers. We got to go out there and get these people. We got to let the Holy Spirit do what he want to do. Holy Spirit, I died to you. So when the Holy Spirit begin to come up, everything that's not like the, not like God, they got to die. They got to wash. He got to wash you up and come up out and come upon you with the power of the Holy Spirit in the move. I'm telling, I'm talking about when you go into the hospital. I don't care. We, we need to go into the hospital. Every, we need to go everywhere all over the world but, but on our block first. But we, we need to go because it, 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 I'm tired. Like, they're selling drugs on the corner. People, they drunk. They, they do it. They party. They, it's just so much. The enemy is moving throughout this world. 
And we got this fire, the power of the Holy Spirit, and, and we sit in the church entertaining nonsense. We sitting there watching who can shop the most, who who talking about this person, what this person going through. Yo, we need to get together and come together on one accord. That's the problem. We need one accord. So you think about when it's unity, there's strength. You gotta think about it. when they got on one accord. But at first, those problems, they couldn't get along. They was immature. So sometimes we can be immature, but we need to be be mature so that the Holy Spirit can move in our righteous. Our, we are like a righteous instrument. And we gotta let the Holy Spirit just take full control. Amen. Only the Bible's only the pure in heart shall see God. Your heart gotta be pure. We talk about the Holy Spirit. He's holy, and He's a Spirit that moves. He wanna heal the sick. He wants people to be delivered and set free. There's no way that the hospitals fill up with sick people. And we got to fire the Holy Spirit. We so busy worrying about our problems, worrying about our situation. Oh, I'm going through this. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm dealing with this. God, trouble over here, trouble over here. We just murmur and complaining. We not focused. We got to hold, we got to focus on the power of the Holy Spirit so he can move. The Holy Spirit know when you're right, you know when you're not right. And the Holy Spirit is not going to work through an unclean vessel. So we need to get ourselves together. We need to work out, we need to work out our own soul salvation with fair and trimming. Get together, get our minds right, what's going on with us, what's our problem, what our situation is, and let things go. It's time to die. We don't want to die in the church. And as we don't want to die in the church, the people are dying. Amen. Wow. So we, how are we going to continue on in, 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 in the ministry? And, we, and, the, and the most important person is the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't know where you're going. Right. I don't care who you is. With the Bible of boiling and wild leaves, destruction. When you try to do it your way, it's not about you. What you want to do, how you want to do it. You got to say, God, I die. I don't care what it is, God, I got to let go. I don't care what I got to let go, God. I am focused, God. I want you, God, fill me up, Holy Spirit, to our overflow. Fill me up, Holy Spirit, to your presence, to glory, to the power of God begin to move. When people begin to come into the church, the blind, when they can't see, they come inside the church. The fire of the Holy Spirit immediately in the name of Jesus, be healed. And they heal just like that. When people that lay, they can't walk. Just like they just be healed, just like that. It's time out when people got cancer. I heard this, this lady came in here with cancer. And our prophet, the pastor, in the name of Jesus, she went back to the doctor, healed. This is the type of power I'm talking about. But we sit back worrying about our situation. We sit back complaining. We sit back murmuring. And God said, go out, go forth, go in the highways, go in the byways. We got the power of the Holy Spirit. When you see a brother going through, they going, don't, don't wait till they come to the church. You lay hands on them. You got the power of the Holy Spirit. And they will recover right away. But we sit back just playing these games. Game time is over. No more time to play games. No more time to front, perpetrate the fraud. It's time out. When we was in the world, we did all these different things in the world. We lived hard body. We didn't care about nothing. We rocked to the end. We didn't care. We danced. We partied. We boogied. We did all types of different things. Now we want to come to church. We talk about we tired. Tired of what? God, God get tired of you too and replace you just like that. It's about the assignment. It's about the work of God. It's about the Holy Spirit, the fire working through you. So you got to come in the church and stop playing, stop murmuring, stop bickering, please. I, even myself, I, I'm, I'm tired of me. I hate me. I hate my flesh. I hate it. Because I want the power, because I know I was out there. I could have died in my sins. A lot of, a lot of my friends, they didn't make it. They died. They died. They died in their sins. And hell, they lift their eyes up. I pray, you know, I pray. But that's why I'm tired. Even like yesterday when I was working in the shelter, and I began to see this guy, that he knew me like, you know, a lot of my friends, and we sit and talk, wow, you know this person, you know that person. He said, wow, you know a lot of people. But I began to talk to him, and I see his hurt. And I really, really began to talk. And he said, yo, man, when you leave, man, just stay in contact with me. I don't have nobody. Come on, man. That's what I'm talking about. We need to reach these people. Yeah. We sitting there in the church plant. We sitting there dead in the church. We sitting with the Holy Spirit inside us. We sitting there dead. Just sleeping. We just sleeping. This and oh man. And even as us being leaders, man, we yo, we gotta really yo. It's no joke, man. It's no joke with us no more. No joke. And I, I love our pastor. I love him so much because he got us to the point. We gotta be focused. He's not playing no games. I'm telling you, he's not playing no games. He's not playing no games. If you're tired and you're not focused, you sit on the sideline, go sit in the corner. There's no more time to play games. 
people are losing their lives. We got the light. We got light inside of us. We got the Christ Jesus inside of us. We got the fire. We got too much fire. When you look at Peter and John and them, they was on one accord. They had fire. They increased. They increased. Everything was an increase. People was getting saved, delivered, and set free. See, we got to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and continue to follow. Follow Christ. Follow the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, where I'm going? What to do, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, you want me to be with this person, Holy Spirit? You want me to be with that? Holy Spirit, what you want, Holy Spirit? Where I'm supposed to move? Where I'm supposed to go? Because the thing about it, there's a way that's seen right unto a man, but the end is death. That's why I said, not you. It's not about you. You, you just want to see death. That's all you want to see death. But when you begin to let the fire of the Holy Spirit move, you begin to see signs and wonders and miracles in the church. And I know inside of here, Mount Zion, worldwide ministry, man, I am so thankful and so grateful to God that we got a prophet that don't play game. He get the word. He let you know. He might be quiet. He might be cool. But he don't play no game when it comes down to God. He don't play no game when it comes down to the word. He don't come play no game when it comes down to people being saved, delivered, and set free. So we got to get on fire. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I don't know, I'm just tired, I'm tired. And we got to think about this suddenly, the Holy Spirit, suddenly, He want to heal you. Yes, suddenly, the Holy Spirit want to deliver you. Suddenly, what are you going through? Suddenly, the Holy Spirit just want to, this, this, this move, move, move you from, from here to here. But then suddenly, you got to let the Holy Spirit do what He want to do. The Holy Spirit, like I said, He's the most important person on this earth. He know your steps. The Bible says a good man, a good man's footstep is ordered by the Lord. So the Holy Spirit wants to guide your footstep. But you don't want you don't want the Holy Spirit to lead your footstep. Because you want to do what you want to do. And then you sit there and got the nerve to talk about why God is not moving in my life. Because you stuck. You stuck in quicksand. And you like to be stuck. You don't want God to have his way in your life. You want to stay stuck. That's one thing I say about my mother. God bless her soul. Woo, that woman, I'm telling you, she taught me. Mm, Ooh, she taught, boy, ooh, you hear me, man, I know. She taught me about the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit. I watched this woman, I never knew when my mother was going through nothing. That woman smiled, that woman kept fighting, fighting, letting the Holy Spirit move. In the Bowery, she used to feed the people in the Bowery, she was going on 42nd Street, preach the gospel all over the, I mean, my family, she ain't play no games. You know, I'm praying for you. I love you, but you get yourself together, she ain't play. Because she, she it was a fire in her. I watched her little stuff when she used to shout. And you know, a lot of times I used to come a little high, whatever, and stuff like that. But she always acknowledged me. So look at my son. I'm about to get out of here, but it, you know, you know what really touched me? The mantle. She passed passed the mantle on. Because I never forgot, like a like long time ago, my mother was in the hospital and she was on her, her, her you know, deathbed, whatever. I will not call it deathbed. She's on glory bed. She just relaxed. But um when she couldn't grip my hand, she couldn't do nothing. And I said, Mommy, I'm going to buy you a nice dress and, um, you know, take you to dinner. But she gripped my hand. Oh. Ooh. I'm looking at it. When she gripped my hand, it was a fire. The power of the Holy Spirit. Son, I'm good. I finished my work. I finished my course. I'm, I'm good, son. I, I'm passing on to you. She passed a man through the fire of the Holy Spirit back to me. She gave it to me. And I felt it. So now every time I, I, I look at being up here, I'm grateful to God to be up here. I'm grateful to God that the power of the Holy Spirit that can speak through me. I can do nothing. That's one thing about me. I don't, it's nothing about me. I'm nothing. I'm a wretched sinner saved by grace and mercy. A wretched sinner saved by grace and mercy. It's nothing about me. That's why I always say God decrease me, kill everything in me. We got to get to the point that God, whatever's trying to hold me back, God, whatever's trying to tie me down, God, with any distraction, any things so of God, God, kill the me, God, that your fire and your Holy Spirit, God, can move through me, God, and work through the world. Just like right now on YouTube, I don't know what you're going through, I don't know your situation, but the fire of the Holy Spirit want to heal you, want to deliver you, want to set you free. You don't have to be down and out. You don't have to be oppressed. You don't have to be depressed. But the power of the Holy Spirit want to pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. You can make it. 
Jesus Christ paid the way. He's the truth. He's the way, truth, and life. No man come unto the Father but through Jesus Christ. But the most important person right now on this earth is the power of the Holy Spirit. And he want to raise you from your dead. He want to bring you back to life. So far the scripture. 